Another thing we need to talk about when booking trainers is restrictions within the freelance agreement. Now you might think, what restrictions? But here's your trainer in a room with 5, 10, 20 of your delegates. Mm. How are you going to feel if they start pitching their next row of courses direct to them? They can't do that. That's well, well, I don't want them to do that. You don't want them to do that. The problem is in the absence of any agreement mm. in your contract, they can do that. Mm. Because while employees have duties on them imposed by common law, whether or not you've given them a contract, mm. freelancers have nothing. Mm. The default is they're not and they can do what they like. So there are all sorts of issues around do you want them to be able to pitch to people, um, access to mailing lists, uh, feedback forms that you really need to consider yeah. and different business models are going to work different ways mm. because some people do a very cheap training day because they're allowed to pitch yes you see that with speakers yeah. on platforms don't yeah. you yeah. and some people do a fee earning day and they kind of belong to you for that moment and you need to figure out what your default contract is Yes. In a way that works for your business. Mm. Um, and then you can use your booking form if there are specific courses that you want to do differently. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, you're building a fabulous business for your freelancers. Yes. So if you're using a freelance business model, that may not be what you were planning. No, it's interesting, isn't it? Because clearly trades and professions are very different how they manage that. Absolutely. Mm. So if you're using freelance trainers, think about what restrictions you might need.